OIC has a long distinguished history in Florida. Um, you've used the program, you've probably used the tax credit as well. Um, this is challenging work, mm -hmm. and uh, I'd like to hear a little bit about how you've used the program. Why don't you tell us a little bit about OIC, who you serve, what you do, and then we can talk about the bonding. We're a community-based workforce development organization. The inference there is that there's access to all kinds of credentials in this country, but in addition to access to credentials and a job, there are other areas, elements that, that tend to deter academic and vocational gains. And one of those things is incarceration. So, uh, so this particular program, the bonding program, has been a great tool for us. Uh, you know, we first and foremost say that we ask employers, we meet them where they are. Business's job is to run a business. And so we make sure we first make sure people are equipped and are prepared for that respective job. We always start with business to make sure people are qualified, and it's our job to do that. Then we introduce the bonding program to help mitigate their concerns. It's been a very effective tool for so us. So this is not a charity? It's not, by no means. In fact, I tell all people, you know, we who run nonprofit organizations, they call us the bleeding hearts, uh, but we always say that we still run a business as well. And we also recognize that there are two customers. There's the students who are looking for an opportunity to be gainfully employed, but businesses, we want to make sure they're the end users. And we say to them, we want to make sure we're helping your bottom line. This is a qualified candidate who happened to have some issues. And here's a tool to help us mitigate those concerns that you might have. Time people say, well, how'd you get that person hired? I said, every circumstance is going to be different. And we make sure that we approach every student and every employment opportunity uniquely. And in some instances, you need to use that bond. In some instances, you don't. Um, and so it really does vary, Eric, and I tell our, our staff all the time, take every opportunity, be very, very specific and intentional about the circumstance of that opportunity, as well as the circumstances of that respective job seeker. And if there is an instance where you need to use it, please do that. And, and sometimes, even if we don't think there's a concern, we would suggest to, uh, to, to the employers, here's an addition to that, a bond. And a lot of times, as you suggested earlier, they typically will say, you know what, the fact that you even offered this bond, they usually will back off and give them a sense of reassurance that you're confident, and that confidence protrudes on and, in fact, give them opportunities to gain, to land that employment opportunity. His name is Quentin Washington. Quentin Washington is a rock star in the emergency medical services world. When Quentin arrived, of course, he was coming to us from, you know, his past environment and where he and his background was what it was. Quinton became an emergency medical technician. Quinton then became a state licensed Florida paramedic. Quinton, from there, uh, moved on to become a critical care transport paramedic. Quinton, stand up. I've got to tell you that uh, our involvement with the program and with Newton, with OIC over the years has just been tremendous. Um, we want to continue and we'll continue working with Newton and OIC. We're, it's a program that we are able to grasp um, and to, to understand as an employer. You we know? see it as a real plus. We really do. And I, I'll tell you one last story. It, it could have been anybody that came to us from OIC, but it just happened to be Quentin, and it's one of Mary's favorite stories. Quentin was a very new employee at the time, and he was driving a car that was in pretty tough shape, and he had to get to work, and his car broke down on uh, the Palmetto Expressway. For those of you who are from Florida, if ever, it's, a, it's, a, it's a heavily traveled road. Got his car to the side of the road, and probably walked and ran about two and a half miles and made it to work on time. And when he was asked, when, when he was asked by his supervisor, Quentin, why didn't you just call us and tell us you were going to be late? Or aren't you worried about your car? Quinton's response was, I can replace the car. I can't replace my job. <laughs> so that alone, if that gives you any indication of you know, what we've gotten through, the through OIC and the federal bonding program, it's, it's treasure. You know, I think those are excellent stories. Congratulations. Good job. Don't let him go anywhere unless he's moving <laughs> up. Yes. Uh, you were able to be bonded. Yes. So tell us I, a little bit about that. I was. Uh, I was incarcerated for six years. And um, before I was released, I received a letter from the OIC program uh, stating that when I got out, they would love to help me transition back into society. So I, uh, they're located inside a workforce. But uh, before I got into the program, I just would like to say um, the workforce is not designed for my special needs. Uh, so when I 
was introduced to the OIC program, the staff there know exactly what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. They know how to talk to me and mentor me, you know, give me encouraging talk, they get me into classes because I didn't know how to email and I didn't know how the proper way to write a resume or any of those things. So OIC helped me, you know, with a lot of things besides the federal bonding. The bonding, they made me go to classes uh, to get bonded and I received the paperwork uh, with a seal and everything on it. So when I was introduced out to the workforce, I kind of kept that as my trump card mm -hmm. in, in, my, in my folder. So I would present myself and I'm really bubbly and I have a great personality. And then when I tell them about the fact that I was incarcerated for six years, you can see the deflation. They're, oh. Mm -hmm. But then I pulled that out and then they're like, oh, Okay, you know, so then, you know, it, it was, it's, it's a really great, a great thing, and I'm glad that I got the opportunity. And if it wasn't for the staff at OIC that made me feel comfortable, you know, I probably would, I don't know where I would be today. If you listen to my story and look at me, and I'm genuinely talking to you and giving you eye contact, my body language is telling you, I really want this. I just made a mistake. People have a heart. I've been behind the walls, and I know that there's those, a lot of inmates do not have positive influences. So for you to come out, and if you say, I'm done with that life, and I'm not going to associate with those people no more, where do you go? When you walk into a workforce, they don't, a normal career establishment, they don't know how to help you. So a program and, like OIC, they know how to talk to you. They're going to tell you. They're going to critique you. They're going to polish you up that rough little stone you are and send you right back out. Carla. <laughs>